joining us on this edition of Clubcast. First and foremost, I want to thank all of our sponsors, our donors. I want to thank our funders. And I really want to give a special shout out to our community who really care about our youth that we serve. I also want to thank our board of directors who really do work very hard on behalf of our community and our young people. Thank you to all of our staff who spend countless hours ensuring that our young people get the best of the best and they do it so tirelessly. Um, I, I sometime wonder why they do it the way they do it, but then I come back to reality is because they really do care about the kids we serve. Today I have a, an amazing guest, a good friend of mine, and we were also uh, in leadership uh, St. Lucie together, class 34, the best class ever, board member, Sarah Pride. What an introduction. Thanks. Nice to be here. Well, I, like, I know you have, like, this really long resume, and I, I just figured that I would just, like, just tell two things about you. The best two things. Well, you know, Sarah, uh, when I became the CEO for Boys and Girls Clubs, actually, I wasn't quite the CEO yet. I was an interim. I was in leadership on the bus, and I was like, I need to find me a couple of board members that I know are going to help take us to the next level. And uh, I made a, I'm going to say a left turn, at least with my eyes, and I'm like, Sarah is going to be on that board, on this board. You got several of us at that, in that group. I did, I did, and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, to have you on our board for a lot of reasons. And the first one is, is your own passion for young people and how serious you take um, the youth that we serve, but just in general, your whole being, like how you and your, your husband do your family, which is very important to me. Uh, your kids, your kids get to do some amazing things. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I think your young son, he like hunts and I'm like seeing him with, like deer and just so many other just really cool things that they get to experience. But with that said, you also have that same attitude with our kids at the Boys and Girls Clubs, and we're always brainstorming of how we could do better. And uh, I know, and, and I'm going to give you a chance to kind of talk about it, you know, you've been on a lot of committees over the years, and I know that one of those committees was the Youth of the Year. Would you like to share a few of your experiences there? So I think you already know, um, and I say it time and time again, Youth of the Year is my favorite Boys and Girls Club event of the year. Um, it showcases what we do. Um, our, it really shows um, our audience and our supporters and our donors what our programs can do for our kids. Um, this year we have, for the very first time in St. Lucie County Boys and Girls Club history, we have a Youth of the Year Florida winner. Um, and Mia is a junior in high school. She'll be going on. This year was her second year competing, and she did phenomenal. So I know she's going to continue on and keep representing the Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County. Well, I'm just going to be honest, and it's going to be forever on video, but I remember when you were, I think you did it two or three years, at least two. And I remember you would come up with some, at the time, I was like, is she kidding me? Like, is she really going to work us this hard with Youth of the Year? But I tell people this all the time. It's not what we did today that allowed us to have a state youth of the year. It's the years of people pouring into the club, pouring into the kids, coming up with new ideas and trying to figure out what is the best solution to not just come up with a, um, a youth of the year winner, but to just give youth an opportunity to be their best. And so you have done that very well. And... Um, not just the Youth of the Year experience, but everything that was around it for the youth and really helping to grow the staff along the way. So that's been uh, been a blessing to me. I'm going to call it a blessing to me, but it's also benefited the entire organization. We have so many things coming up. As you know, we're just busy, 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 busy. And as a board member, I want to ask you, what is one of your, before we get into like what's coming up with graduation and things, what are some of your favorite things that you get to do on the board outside of Youth of the Year? But what are some of those things that uh, keep you coming back year after year? Because now I believe you are on year, 
almost six. Maybe five. Yeah, I think but, it's I think it's six. I think you're right. I think um, the biggest thing, and I tell everyone this, if you haven't been to one of our clubs, get there. Go on a tour in one of our clubs, see what our programs are doing, look at what our staff is doing. Um, I think I just heard before I came on the set that most of our staff, or half of our staff, are high schoolers or college age students. They're pouring into these kids who are almost their age. Um, and to see what they're doing behind the scenes and see um, what our kids are doing in the community is um, pretty amazing. If you don't come out of, out of one of our clubs changed, um, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, I mean, I can tell you when we moved to one of our newer locations at West Side, you know, people would think I was crazy for doing this, but I put the teens like right across from our main offices. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I did it was I wanted to be able to see what we were doing every day in the clubs. And I really don't feel like, you know, even as a CEO, that we sit in an ivory tower, but that we're actually close enough to the ground to where a young person can come and see me and dream about being a CEO or dream about being a COO or a CFO or one of the O's, right? Right. But we, we want to be able to give our young people the opportunity to leave us and think about how they can impact the next generation. And I believe um, that there's no age at where we can't start that process. And, and really, it starts at the board level. It starts at what you all do because, you know, everyone will tell you in St. Lucie County, and I'm actually saying this out loud, <laughs> that we have the best board of directors who are compassionate and have passion for what we do every day. And I think it's important that we continue to bring on board le members like yourself, Sarah, that really are passionate. And there does come a time sometime because it is taxing on you guys because I don't know how many times I call you. We're a working board. A working board, but I call you a lot because I call board members a lot because there should never be a secret about what we're doing. We don't want to be the secret sauce. We want people to understand that we care about our youth and our, commu and our community. Absolutely. I want to talk about this graduation. And, Ooh. you know, I've been here just around seven years. And I remember every graduation that we've had so far and the impact that we had on those young people. Yep, we give out scholarships. But the impact that these kids realized that they went to different schools and those guys are always going to be friends. So you see a lot of, they become alumni of Boys and Girls Clubs, but they all, be, they all become lifelong friends. And I have seen that over the years. But I've also seen us get so much better at the recognition on graduation from just getting on stage and thanking people and having an audience of 25 mm -hmm. to now potentially have an audience of 150 or 200 people recognizing kids. And I, I remember one graduation, we had somewhere in the neighborhood of only 10 graduates. And not I want this year. Not this year, right? So I want you to talk a lot about graduation from your perspective and uh, what you think we need to do more of. Um, so first and foremost, we're so proud of the graduates. We have 42 um, graduates this year from the Boys and Girls Club, and those are um, some of those are even staffers, kids that have um, worked their way up and are, are actually working for the Boys and Girls Club. So 42 graduates um, coming through um, that we get to celebrate. And like you said, it is important to celebrate those kids, their accomplishments. Um, we'll be doing that next Friday, which is May 20th at our West Side um, campus. <coughs> And it will begin at 6 p.m. And anybody can attend, um, if you'll just let us know ahead of time. These students have been given a personalized invitation to take home to their family. Um, so it's not just their graduation at their high school. We're also celebrating them. Uh, what I think is truly important is where those kids are going. So out of those 42 <coughs> graduates, we have two Will that are going into the armed forces. I saw your shirt under there, your Army US shirt. Army. Yes. yes. So we have two of those graduates are going into our armed forces. We have several that are going to be taking advantage of the IRSC Promise Program, um, and we are going to be giving scholarships to all of those students. So if you um, 
have somebody in the community, if you have a foundation, or if you're um, interested in donating for any of those scholarship um, opportunities, we will be giving each one of those students a scholarship to go um, home with, and they're gonna need it. Um, books are not free. College is not free. So um, those are really important, and I'm, I'm excited to celebrate them. Sorry to be coughing. I, I just, <laughs> the excitement. I think that was a cough of excitement of, of uh, what we're able to do. Now, I do know this. You may not know this yet, but I do know that right now we have $15,000 worth of scholarships. Woohoo! All right. So, you know, to your point, uh, we want to make sure our young people are walking away with an opportunity. I think, Sarah, one of my most favorite things to do in the organization, uh, there's a lot, but is to know that we have the ability to give a kid, you know, an opportunity to take two classes or a year worth of classes. And that is impactful on these young people because some of them come from households, not all of them, but some come from households where college is not talked about. They're just trying to get through high or school. Or they're the first one going to college or in their family. they're the first one. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we don't want to take away from what families are doing. And families sometimes only know what they know. But we want to make sure that we're providing the information for them so that they know that there is opportunities for them to go to college, go to trade school. I mean, I know you guys, you got to give a plug. Yes. To yeah, Pride bring Electric. Us our, yes, bring our tradesmen, please. We need them. And that's what we want to work on. We want to make sure that we're giving kids the opportunity. So if they want to go to a college or a trade school, scholarships are available or we're making them available by some generous donors throughout our community. Yes, which we so appreciate. I think the other thing, and Will, I want to give you a kudos, you and your staff, um, the 42 kids that are graduating, it's a testament not just to the schools that they're attending, but also the support they're getting at the clubs. Those programs are working and this is a testament to those programs. I appreciate that and we're going to continue to do it and we're going to continue to bring people along <laughs> that's going to help us do it. Well, I want to share this video with you because it talks a lot about what we do at Boys and Girls Clubs, and we'll talk more in the second part of the segment. These are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. The sounds of tutoring and tech and health and fitness and arts and music. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. Thank you for joining us again. I, my next guest is uh, not new to the organization. Her family has been around a long time in St. Louis County, all doing extraordinary things. But I have with me Caitlin Swope. I started to say Sparrow. That was for your dad. Yeah. I did. I was going to say Sparrow just for your dad. <laughs> but I got Caitlin Swope, who is, uh, I'm going to say, an up-and-comer for Boys and Girls Clubs. And what I mean by that is, uh, Caitlin started with us as a club director at Boys and Girls Clubs and now holds a position as an area director. And we have so much promise uh, for you just, just because of your personality and your love for the kids and the work mm -hmm. that you do. So I want to first start off by saying thank you for thank you. being who you are and, and ensuring that our kids are getting what they need and what they deserve. We got so many programs going on right now. Yes. And we have so many going on in the summer. Yes. But I want to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about Boys and Girls Clubs from your perspective, mm -hmm. and then we can talk about kids and programs okay. and that sort of, sort of thing. Absolutely. So um, 
I joined the organization five years ago and I never thought that this was going to be my career path. I don't necessarily have a background working with kids. I never thought that I would find my career working with kids, um, but really I found my reason as to why I do what I do, not only to develop children to be the best that they can be, but now in my new position as an area director, it's really important to me that I help develop staff. Um, even if this is not their career path, I want to ensure that I am developing them to be the best they can be with, you know, whatever their future holds for them. So um, I've changed my why a couple of times, but it really is for staff and the members to feel emotionally and physically safe while they're in our club, whether they're working or attending. I think just what you just said that you changed the why a couple times. Mm -hmm. It's pretty remarkable because a lot of people think that their why 10 years ago is the same why today, and that's not true. Mm -hmm. It just all depends on where you're at in your career or in your family. But I was just thinking, uh, I had asked you a question prior to this segment. I said, how many staff members do we have that are uh, in high school? Mm -hmm. And you said in high school and college, it's about half. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, before we walked in here, I was like, do you know that we want best places to work with high schoolers and college kids? Don't tell me that our people, our young people are not doing a great job. Right. We want best places to work two years in a row. Mm -hmm. We won the Chamber Award, Business for Nonprofit Award, three times mm -hmm. with college, half college, and high schoolers, mm -hmm. and they do a remarkable job. Yes, they do, and it's, I'm a part of the interview process, and a lot of the high schoolers that I interview, this is their first job they've ever had, and it's almost like, it excites me because, okay, we can start from the ground up. No one's really coming in already thinking that they know how to work with kids or how to run programming. It's really, um, it, allows them to be open to learning and growing in the organization and in their personal lives as well. It's really important to us as an organization that we allow our staff to be themselves and create their own talents and opportunities within the club. So if we hire someone that loves art, okay, we want you to bring that into the club. It also gives them that passion that they may not know right now. Um, I actually have a staff at Manatee that I just hired a couple months ago, and recently I just got a random text from her saying, I wanna thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to work for Boys and Girls Club. I've never really felt a part of something. And again, going back to my why, that was the reminder of why we do what we do, why it's so incredibly important, and what we train our lead staff in is we are developing kids, basically, that are 16 years old that have never had a job before. We, we are their second family to teach them and to help them grow personally and professionally. I'm going to take my eyes off of you for a second. I'm going to go okay. back to the camera here, right, because I think this is an important point. So what I just heard Caitlin say is that from a workforce readiness standpoint, that we have... 90 teenagers, 80 to 90 teenagers between the ages of 16 and let's say 22 that we are developing every single day to be in the workforce. I also think I heard Caitlin say without saying it is that we're always going to have turnover because our goal is to get kids out of all these teenagers or young adults out of our clubs and into the workforce. I'm excited about that. I'm talking to all the manufacturers and I'm talking to everyone that's looking for employees. And so as we continue to grow in our community, we're gonna continue to look to you to hire our young people when they graduate high school, when they graduate college and wanna get into the career that they choose. Absolutely. Is that what you said? Yes. That's yeah. perfect. Yep. Thank you. So one of our partnerships this summer is with the Career Source, their summer, summer of Success program. So what are we? What we are looking for is our 16 and older teen members and staff to be a part of this program. 
in which they will be able to enter not only with our organization but our other community partners throughout the county that are willing to run this internship program. That's awesome. And I want to tell you, Caitlin, because you don't know it yet, but I just got a note from Bank of America that we just got a grant that we're going to be able to hire even some more teenagers to awesome. work in a readiness program. And we're working through with some other uh, organizations to potentially have, and I know we're doing it now, but we're not doing it on a scale that I would like to see, but that we will be able to hire kids throughout the entire year to work. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking at a higher number than what we're doing now. Awesome. So I'm excited about that. I want to, you know, because we're developing staff, but I want to talk about those staff that are developing the young people mm -hmm. because that's who we're in a kid business, right? right. And I want to talk about this summer and some of the programs that um, I know you have a, a lot to do with and the other area directors. You may mm -hmm. want to give a shout out to your other area yes. directors, right? <laughs> but I want to talk about how all this is working together to benefit the teens and the kids that we serve. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. So we have a lot going on this summer. It's kind of hard to wrap my head around everything. So um, what's really awesome about this summer is we're really going back to the normal um, because the last two years we haven't been able to do a lot. So really this summer is about opportunity, opportunity for our kids and our teens to be exposed to things that they necessarily wouldn't be on their in their day-to-day -day lives. So some of the things that we have is we're bringing back field trips, both in club and out of club. It was really important to us that our field trips are really fun, but also there's an educational component behind it. So um, one of our field trips is urban air. Um, also with Urban Air, they are putting on a STEAM program. Um, so our students will be able to go through the STEAM program and then get the opportunity to do the jumping and all of that. Um, we'll also be going to the Brevard Zoo, which they have a curriculum base as well, uh, learning about science and things like that. Um, so the students, our, our members are gonna be able to go through that program before they actually go on that field trip. Um, and then some of our in-club field trips, we've got bush wildlife coming where the, stu the members will learn about different animals, get to touch them and interact with them. We have the cake lady coming who she will be creating gourmet cupcakes with the members. They'll be able to create their own cupcakes and things like that. In addition to the field trips, um, some of the partnerships we had, like I said, um, the summer of success, but one that I'm really excited for is um, this will be the second year that we are doing it. We are partnering with FAU Harbor Branch through a grant that we have received. FAU Harbor Branch is going to be working with our teen and tween, so our middle school and high school members, and throughout the summer they are going to be learning about conservation. We think it's really important that they know the importance of conservation throughout our community. So the goal is that they learn about conservation, um, they go out to do different beach cleanups and community cleanups, and then the culminating project at the end is that they create um, some type of art project through um, with the products that they um, picked up from beaches and communities to really it be an advocate project to show that um, conservation is really important in our community and keeping our beaches and waters clean. So you could have just kept going. Yeah, I, I really can. <laughs> well, that is a, a great synopsis of what yeah. we're going to be doing. Um, but I heard a lot of fun, but I heard a lot of education, mm -hmm. right? So we're an enrichment program, so yes. we want to enrich their lives with not just basketball and football and baseball, but we also want to make sure, because that's going to be happening too. Yes. Yeah, that's just right. a normal part of business right. of what we but do. But even right? with that, and when I say education, educational programs, I don't want it to be, um, you know, looked at as being boring because even with the sports programs that we do run, there's an educational component behind that. Right. Um, personal enrichment and academic enrichment, learning teamwork and good sportsmanship and things like that. So that's it's awesome. really important that everything that we do there's some there's a reason why behind it and we're just not you know having a free-for-all well let me do something because we have like two minutes okay. left i want to make sure you get an opportunity to give a shout out to your 
fellow yes. uh, area directors, because yeah. they'll be like, why didn't you mention my name, yes. Caitlin? <laughs> yeah, so I, um, I am an area director, but I also wit work with two other area directors, um, Jalene Henley and Tanisha Jones, and we really, um, our goal is, like I said, develop and help our staff in everything that they need. Um, I know it sounds a lot easier but than said than done, but um, I couldn't do what I do without them. We make a really good team. And shout out to our supervisor, the vice president of operations, Matthew Churchy. Um, he's, you know, the best boss we could ask for. Um, super supportive. And he really allows us to do the things, especially what we're doing this summer, um, just by just constant support. So, well, Caitlin, Tanisha, and Jaylene, I don't think he really has a lot of choice in the matter, but that's just me speaking. I mean, I could be We're hard to deal with sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to say uh, any parent that is not hearing this, the, like what you said is like summer's going to be so much fun. So much fun, yes. And there's so many opportunities. You never even talked about like our workforce readiness program where kids are going to have an opportunity to make up to, you know, a certain amount of dollars every week mm -hmm. by just being good, productive young people. Yes. And they will have some work to do, but it'll be minimal. Mm -hmm. It'll be more about learning. And, right. And we're going to continue to invest in them. Yes. Thanks for joining me today, Thank Caitlin. You for this has me. been fun, and we could have talked a lot longer. Yes. Thank you to the community for all that you do to give us an opportunity, uh, Caitlin and I, to really work with our communities, youth, and do the best that we can. Until next time, we'll see you later.